Hello everyone, and this is going to be my first film review on the channel. So today we will be talking about a short horror film which I have just recently posted and I've just recently watched. And in my fair and honest opinion, I really enjoyed it. It was 10 minutes of engaging, fun, atmospheric, tense, enjoyment I've, um, I've probably ever seen. So this is being all wrapped up 10 minutes, it's very mysterious, but the film that I'm going to review today is called Don't Look Away. So this is a short horror film where it's about where this teenage girl is doing a makeup and then she looks out of a window and sees this hooded, this rugged man in this like turd up suit and he's got like sort of like potato sack on his face and it's full of chains and you can see there's only two eyes and the and he's staring at her and it's a random stranger she doesn't know who it is it's just there so she calls her dad and says there's someone in the back garden and they're staring at her and the only thing her dad says in a panic and scared voice is, don't look away. This whole 10 minutes is very atmospheric from right at the beginning. So from right at the beginning, it starts off with it being casual. There's no tense music whatsoever. And it's just like a normal day. But the tense music actually starts up when we see the hooded figure. And it just keeps going up throughout the film. It just gets getting higher and higher and higher. And the stakes just get higher and higher and higher. And it's really good. And I enjoy it very, very much. I also enjoy what they use for the colour grading. So it starts off with in all these bright colours. She's doing her makeup. It's like white. There's some whites in there. There's some pinks in there. And it's just all bright colours, there's no darks to be seen, but when she looks in over them to the window, and we don't we don't see the hooded figure first, she sees it. So when she sees it and we see her reaction to the hooded figure, it turns all dark, there's shadows everywhere, everything becomes a sort of like cold, pale white. Instead of like a bright white, it's a cold and pale white. And what happens in this film is that it gets darker and darker. But it gets darker and darker in a way of like a slower sense where it's very un you can't notice it it's very subtle and it gets darker and darker each time each minute of the film and even at the end it doesn't even become bright it's still dark but it's got some hints of light in it to show you that it's safe but not at the same time so i like how in the first I would say a minute or so, it's sort of like open, safe and very much not dangerous at all. But when it turns after that minute and it becomes darker, it's, it's more dangerous, more claustrophobic. It's more you can feel for the character, you can feel for the actors and actresses in it, that you know something bad's going to happen. The second fact is that I is that I really enjoy how they use the shots. There is there is very some similar shots, but I would say overall there's some pretty good and clean shots in it overall. You've got some close ups, you've got some wide shots, you've got some mid shots, and you've got some variety in there too. It's not like constant close ups, constant wide shots, constant mid shots. They mix it in to give you more of a dynamic and give you more where you can follow the character and follow the story without being confused or being thinking, oh, I don't like that camera shot, or oh, that looks a bit bad like that, because of it being that you can keep seeing the same shot over and over and over again. I also like the, the hooded guy's design, how we have no questions at the end of the film. Like, we, I, well, we ha that's the wrong way around. We have loads of questions at the end of the film and we get answered none of them. Why is the suited man, why is he in a rugged suit? Why is this entity uh, following them? 
why has this entity got a bag over its head? We get an an one answer, like of it being that the might he might have a bag over his head so he can't see himself, but it doesn't make any sense it wouldn't make any sense for that because at the end he sees himself. So it's got nothing to do with that. Why has he got chains on his face? We don't really know any of that. But I like how it's shredded in mystery. Like we don't even know at the end anything. And I think that what makes it this film really, really nice and really, really pleasant. Like if it was what, an hour and a half? And at the end, we get no answers. I would be frustrated, but it's just 10 minutes. So it's not that bad, really. Lastly, the final thing I'll point out is that there's a great use of Chekhov's gun in this. If no one knows what Chekhov's gun is, Chekhov's gun is basically, a, what it was basically was like a gun on the shelf. So I'll give you a perfect example like Chamber Dead, where we see the gun for the pub, I know it's called, and we get showed and we get told what the gun is at the end of the pub and it's just there on the wall and then later on it gets referenced again due in the middle of the film and then near the end we get obviously Iron Peg uses the gun to shoot the zombies so it's sort of a bit of foreshadowing but sort of it's important and relevant later and that's what it does very well with the mirror so at the beginning we get shown that uh character is our teenage girl is basically doing her makeup and we see the mirror and that's our first shot of a mirror shot and near the end the only way that the monster gets defeated is using the mirror so we get shown the mirror and then we see that the mirror is on the side halfway through and then the mirror gets used so that's a great use of check on score overall i think this movie fits the feel really really well as I've said before, it gives a more mystique element to it. It's more where we get no answers, but it's more in this unnerving sort of thing, like hairs in the back of your head, like you know something's wrong, but you, you don't really know what it is. You want the answers to be told, but you don't at the same time. You're in like a mixed opinions on which one is which. And I really enjoy that it makes audiences think that. It made me think about it when I watched it. So it's really good with its atmosphere. The music is the music is really good. I wouldn't say it's perfect. Mm -hmm. There is some flaws to the music. Like probably in the beginning there's not there's not that much good atmospheric music, but near the end there's a beautiful like violin esque sort of music melody. Sure that the monster is somewhere else and we see the monster and it's really good that works well with the melody. Even though there is a lot of positives, there is going to be some negatives. For example, there is a continuity error in the film where what happens is that we get told near the end that it can split, the monster can split. If someone else, if there's two people watching it and one person leaves, it can double itself. And that's why when she leaves and comes back, the monster isn't there for her. And a bit I don't get is we see the monster getting close to her because she can't actually see it, she doesn't know where it is, and then she gets choked to death. No, well, she gets her eyeballs squeezed out by it. But for some reason, the brother can, looks back and sees it and t pushes him away and, get, and saves her, his sister. And that's what I don't get because we get, show, we get told that he can't, that she can't see the monster that he can see because we've been, it's been doubled, so she can't see it. So how can the brother see her monster, her version of the man, uh, squeezing her eyebrows out? What it should be is that he should just see her eyebrows being squeezed out, or her in pain and agony, and he should not know where the monster is. So I think it's a bit of a continuity error there, where that shouldn't be how it is, but that's probably how the plot had to go to end the plot that way to defeat him or it would be impossible probably and making the mystery being that the monster follows the family is a bit unnecessary it is told in a more mysterious and more like scary way like they're always going to watch him and always going to follow him but it's there's no need of it it could just be that we get because we get no answers anyway it could just be that the monster's just there and just 
It's why it's, to, it's just hunting its victims, hunting its prey, and it's not needed to be there. Also, f finally, the acting isn't that well. Like, it is good, but it could be better. There is some lines, I think, especially from the brother, which I don't like, and I think doesn't sound like he's like acting that much or not not benefit on the actor um nothing got wrong with the actor it's just it the acting in general sounds a bit mid but it is a short film so i can i gotta give it credit you only get the, the best a list of actors so but overall it's it's well shot well lit the atmosphere is perfect for what it's trying to set out to do the monster looks great with all the being practical effects and special effects. I'm a big fan of practical effects. So special instead of um, CGI, I don't mean like CGI. You use monsters on sets mainly, and the characters are understood easily. You don't have it's not very complex. You don't have to figure it out, um, and I like how it stays a mystery too. Also, I like how we don't see the mother. So the mother could be anything. The mother could be like a secret monster or like a demon worship or, or was part of a cult when she was younger or something. But that's it. So overall, I rate it an 8 out of 10. It's very good with the with what it's supposed to be using. And it's very enjoyable. So I highly recommend it. This short film was uh, written, produced and edited by Christopher Cox. And it is really good in my opinion and i'm going to watch some more of his short films to see if they're better or worse than this one which was his first work and was really good so yeah so if you like that this video uh, i would really appreciate it if you like comment and subscribe tell me what your opinions are for the movie if you for the short horror film if you've seen it already what you like what you dislike what was your overall rating and See you guys next time. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. See you.